it's really tough. You take a knife and you go like this, and you put a herring in there, and that's all oh, you got to do. Oh, I don't do. need that from you. <laughs> Well, good morning. Welcome back. Hey, we have a couple of uh, really good guests in here this morning. This is Jim and Hannah of First City Charters here in Ketchikan. Hannah is going to be our youngest captain this year. She's grown up pretty much bossing Jim around, so we thought she better be a captain. So she's going to start out 2022 as the newest and youngest captain we have in our fleet, which is awesome. So they swung by and we thought we'd ask them to do something for us and they're great with uh, running herring. Jim's one of the masters in the fleet of, of herring rigging so mm -hmm. he, I'm gonna let him and Hannah show you what they got and uh, we'll be back at the end. But good luck Hannah. Oh you Thank have. You very much. I'll stick a bunch of herring and especially the cut plugs if like in the fall I fish a lot of cut plugs I may have four dozen cut plugs ready to go all salted. Another thing too is this little container right here, open your bait up prior to going fishing and salt it. Put salt in there. I'll put a bunch of salt in it. What it does is firms your, firms your herring up so that it doesn't fall off the hook. If you're out fishing with herring that's not salted, it's a lot softer and a lot harder to keep on the hook. So you can salt it. You can either use water and salt it or just uh, dry salt it either way. But that's pretty crucial with the herring. Okay, so you want to make sure that the herring has a bend in it because that's going to what that's what creates the spin. That's what draws in the fish. So we're going to take a toothpick. He's going to roll. The thing will be spinning back there like that. And what the toothpick does is holds the bend in him. If you look, you can cup it like in her hand like that, and that's what you're looking for. And that's what will spin the herring. So you're going to want to take your first hook and go through the eyeball and then take your second hook and go through the eyeball again, just like that. And then put your first hook just through the skin on the back and then come back through and lay it flat like that. And then take your second hook and do the same thing, just a little bit farther forward, like so. And then take your line and make a little loop and put it over the nose of the herring it stays in. Oh my gosh, I can't get it now. That's the important part, is you gotta loop the nose. You put a little half hitch on his nose, and he's got two little flippers on his mouth, and once you get it behind that, then it'll hold. That was a terrible job. Like so. This right here is huge, okay? Put it right on your finger, boom, pinch it, and then pull back on his mouth, and there's two little gills, and this line is pretty new, so it's, stiff so it's kind of a hard to get under that far gill there it is and you just so that right there now he's under both gills and he'll drag it won't pull the hooks out it gives it something firm to hold on to and it tightens the roll if you don't do that you'll get a huge roll like this where if you tighten that up it'll just be a little spin like that right there which is what you're looking for for these guys and if you're going to do a big one you can roll these big ones the same way I don't use them that often, but occasionally I'll roll a big herring. And this, you kind of uh, do the same thing, but you'll use multiple toothpicks. Like I'll stick one through his eye, and then I'll stick another one back here, and then I'll stick a third one. Okay, now see how I have a little bend in him, instead of him being straight just like he was before. And now you do the exact same thing. And this is like if you're going to fish herring, a little saran wrap. I'll tie my own hooks and I can adjust actually how far the hooks are separated by what I'm doing. If I'm running herring, big herring, small herring. But it gives you a way to store your hooks where you can get to them pretty quick if you just wrap them in saran wrap. And it's the exact same thing as we did before. The more bend you put in your herring, the more roll. So if you're going to troll fast, you can put just a little tiny bend. Just put a little very very small bend in him and you can haul ass if you want to just depends on you know 
how fast you think you're going to troll or want to troll or both through the eye. Take the first hook, chase it with the second one. And this is a lot easier on a fishing rod where it's not all twisted up. But then same thing, back hook starts off like that. Just through the skin, you're not looking to go deep. Comes back out, boom. Same thing with this one. In, through the skin, back out. And this will probably be a little easier. Okay, I'm wrapping it like that. Now I pinch it. Now I've got a loop. Okay, I go right straight over his mouth. And I open his mouth and then I keep that. I got one gill, but I didn't get them both. There it is. See these little flappers on his mouth? That's where your line's going underneath. And that holds your line there. So now you got one, a bigger one, ready to roll. Got a little tiny band in him. It's got half hitch around his mouth. It's underneath the little flippers. And it'll stay on there all day until something hits it. And that's all I got to say about that. That's awesome. Toothpick here. And that's going to create just a little bend. But since it's a big herring, you want to do another one. So you can see where both the toothpicks are. And then you're going to go through the eyeball. And then follow that with your second hook. There we go. Second one through the eyeball. You can see there. And then you're going to go to the back. <laughs> Just through the skin with your first hook here. And then again, the second hook here. And then come around your finger like so by cracky. And then under the gills. One time we were fishing with my cousin. Gosh, of course we're it. all a little bit competitive, as you could what? imagine. And uh, one of one of the cousins bet him, I don't even think, was there even money? Or they just No, yeah, it, it was 20 bucks. 20 bucks to lick the gutter. The gurry. Yeah. Oh, there was a bunch of gurry in one of the scuffers from guts. halibut fishing. Oh. Hey, he, he did was it. hungry. $20. He $20. Was hungry. Low standard. Standards on the floor. That's horrible. I'll do it with a big one just because it's easier for you to see. This right here is basically just a little jig is all it is. So you put your herring wherever you want it. On here, hold his head. Grab a knife. Boom. And then let your knife do the cutting. Don't just try to... It's, you'll rip it. So you want big clean edges to make it roll. And I don't know if everybody does this, but what I'll do is I'll actually take the guts out of him. I'll put a little slit from his anus to his fins. Boop, pull that out. And I'll pull this out. Boom. And then you're good to go. And there's a million ways to do this. I do it the quickest, simplest way, especially if the fishing's really good. You want to get your gear in the water fast. And all you gotta do is basically go like this. And I do everything on the inside as far as where I put my hooks. When you saw me bend a fish, all my hooks go on the inside. This is the short side of the cut. So my hooks are gonna go on the inside of that. So I'll go here. And then I'll just bring the second hook right up through the middle of this. Just like that. Boom. It'll be a faster spin than those. And a little tight, faster spin. But me personally, I don't like the jigs. I don't use the jigs. What I'll do is usually just grab one. I'll use a little one this time. And I'll just hold him just like that. Knife's not that sharp. Boom. And then you can just pinch him a little bit, get his guts to come out. Now his guts are out. 
And I like uh, the little herring a lot more than I do the big ones. I'll use them more. I mean, I think that's what most of the bait that's out there is usually smaller herring. And then I'm doing the same thing, going through here. Boom, there's your hook. Second one on the short side of the cut where that's smaller. I'll go right up through here. Bingo. And you don't want to go too deep like this where I'm hooking right here. You don't want to go more than about a quarter inch where you're going through here. If you go way back to here and stick it in real deep, it won't roll. So you want to just keep it on the outer edge, maybe within a quarter inch of the outside. And I don't know if you can see the angle, but this side is shorter. This side is longer on that cut. And everything's done on the short side. All the hooks are always on the short side. If you put them on the other side, usually they won't roll. That's what you got. Oh, you're cheating right now, aren't you? No. So trying to stretch your stuff up. You go through on a if six, I, six if I were doing charter. a charter in September with, and there's a lot of cohodes around, I may go through seven, eight dozen herring. In a day. In a day. Wow. And I'll probably cut four or five dozen, have them pre cut if I know the fishing's good and going to be good. And that way you can roll through the bait fast. And, you know, it doesn't take me two seconds to bait, especially a cut plug. I mean, whole herring, most of the time I'm using whole herring, it's for king salmon. Because, uh, you know, you, if the bite's really on, especially with cohos, you don't have time to deal with that. But the kings are, you know, one here, one there. But, and that's just my way of fishing, pretty much most of what I do. Nice. Well, because we know Jim and Hannah here at Knutson Cove Marina, we know how competitive they are. And uh, we thought a little a little competition would be fitting for them. So we're going to have a little bit of a race. Who can uh, rig a herring the quickest? So we'll give them uh, a minute to get ready, and then uh, we'll see who is the best. Okay. Is the teacher going to become the student? Are we toothpicking them, or are we just going? We're toothpicking them. I think that you should have two, to have two this toothpicks. One. Two toothpicks. Two toothpicks. No, nope, that's mine. Oh, wow. Well, okay, this one's mine. It's already stuck. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Herring down. <sighs> Three, two, one, go. <laughs> oh, <that is. laughs> Ooh, look at her hauling. Boom. Oh, she's getting a little shaky. It's all in the knot, I think. That's yeah, the lip thing, thing is everything. Getting the lip thing is huge. One shot. No. Oh, my Dang it. <laughs> that was close. You did good, Hannah. That was closer than I thought it would be. You guys made that a good race. Yeah. Ah, bada boom, really bada bing. Concentrated. I even uh, tried a, on that one. You owe me a hamburger. We're going to try it again after the end of the season because <laughs> Hannah's going to do about 10,000 between now and the end of the season. <coughs> but, hey, thanks, thanks guys for being here. You bet. No um, problem. If you guys like this video, hit like and of course hit subscribe. Uh, we'll, we'll boost our sponsors and we'll see you next week. Bada boom, bada bing.